And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. one more time. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for a few minutes. I'm honored to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and I just thank God for all his rich blessings and everything that the Lord is doing because the Lord is blessing, and we have to give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. Praise the Lord for blessing us, and I just thank him, praise God, for allowing us to be back in the house of worship one more time. Thank God that we have had, had not had to close back down since we've been open in this ministry. Praise the Lord. We have not opened for Scythe and Fort Valley. Praise the Lord. And every time we think about it, the COVID start rising higher. We don't want nobody to be sick. We don't want nothing to be spread it. Praise the Lord, and we wanted to follow the guidelines of our insurance. I thank God for having insurance to cover us. Praise the Lord, and let us know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. I thank God, praise the Lord, for the Pentecostal Revival Hour. I thank God for all the calls that we get. Thank God for, praise the Lord, our Facebook, and we just thank God for YouTube, and and all the cables and all the different places that carry the Pentecostal Revival Hour. We do thank God for all of the letters that we are receiving. I also thank God for your donations that you're giving to the ministry. Praise the Lord to help keep the broadcast going. I want you to know we appreciate it, and we thank you. We thank God, praise the Lord, that we do have prisoners writing us, praise the Lord, and, and sending us a donation. And so we are able to uh, send them a letter back. I had one prisoner that uh, sent, and he needed a large print Bible. So I thank God we were able to get that large print Bible off to him. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because sometimes uh, your eyes ain't, ain't, ain't as good. Some people's eyes ain't as good as other people's eyes. And so anything that we can do to help, that's what we want to do. And we are praying for all the sick in the shut-in, we're praying for all of those that can't make it out to the house of worship, but you uh, uh worshiping, praise the Lord, on your, praise the Lord, Facebook, and you're worshiping them on your YouTube and on your cable and on your TV program. We thank God that we are able, praise God, to do that. And thank God for all of the tapes that we're uh, getting out, praise the Lord. And also, some people don't want tapes, they just want literature. We thank God for the literature that we are getting out in the ministry uh, to the people because some people just like to read about us and see what we are doing. And I thank God what we are doing is no secret. It's a blessing. And I just give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And I just thank, praise the Lord, Lord the Lord for all of the contacts that be made, made unto us because we get a a lot of contacts. I thank God for our people that answer the phone. Praise the Lord. I thank God for y'all. Y'all keeping that going and everything. And I, I want you to know I appreciate it. You kept it going. Praise the Lord. All while the pandemic was going on, you still had it going. And the ministry is doing good. 
We are not crybabies. We are not beggars. But I thank God. I do want to thank God for uh, the little girl that lost her battle in Forsyth last week. I had been praying for her. She was so beautiful. She was so pretty. She was a pretty child. And she lost her battle uh, last week. And I've been praying for the family because prayer should be made for all people. And I asked the Lord, you know, if he would comfort them during this time. You know, people, we got to, we got to pray for one another. We don't never know when we're going to be in a need. We don't never know what can happen to us. But when we see a need, we need to, we need to get on it. Again, I thank God for it. I thank God for blessing us. I thank God I was able to go to, I'm saying this for the glory of God. I thank I, uh, God I was able to go to Tamika's uh, son game last Thursday night. I went to the, I went to the game and, and I was telling my sister whenever they, whenever they got off that bus and started playing, I thought it was Southwest used to be banned. <laughs> but they got off with power. And I got up and I shook a leg. Some of you all don't know what that is, but when I go to celebrate, I go to celebrate like I'm at church today. I'm going to be dancing and praising the Lord today. I didn't come to sit down. I didn't come to see what somebody else going to do. I come to praise him. I come to lift him up. I come to shout for joy. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready. We're going on into our service. Praise the Lord. And at this time, praise the Lord. Uh, Assistant Pastor Walton is coming. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. Let us all bow our head in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Everybody, I want to praise the Lord. At this time, I'm going to ask everyone to get your Bibles. And hold them up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazola Pentecostal Church to be taught the Word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins and the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ-like, I am born again, I have power over the devil, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen once again. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Amen, amen. If you will, just bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. We thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. We thank you for your son Jesus coming, dying on the cross for our sin. Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that has been made available for us today. And Lord, as we go into your word, we pray that there is a word of salvation to the loss, a word of comfort and healing for those who are going through. 
Lord, we pray that every yoke of the enemy is destroyed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen once again. Let's give the Lord another hand. <laughs> oh, yes, you may be seated. Once again, we welcome everyone in this congregation this morning. We welcome those of you who are viewing by television, by radio, listening, those who may be watching on YouTube or Facebook. We want to thank God for you. And we pray that as we go forth today, that the word of God be a blessing to you and your family. Before I get started, I do want to give you honor where it is due. I want to thank God for the founder of this ministry, Apostle Albert Phelps. I also thank God for the co-founder of this ministry, Senior Pastor Ethel Phelps. Thank God for her hanging on in here. Recently celebrating a birthday. I know many times people think that we married. Because I look old and she look young. But she is my mother. But I want to thank God for her being my mother. <laughs> yeah, so again, just want to thank God for her. Thank God for Pastor Wooten being in the place this morning. <laughs> Pastor of the Forsyth Pentecostal Church, along with his spouse. Thank God for them being here. Amen. I also want to thank God for Pastor Dennert. All the assistant pastors, and I especially want to recognize and thank Assistant Pastor DeShazer. For him covering for me these past few months. I didn't think I was going to be out this long. But things don't always go the way we think things ought to go. And so I just want to let everyone know I haven't been sick. Some people thought I was sick. Some even thought I was dead. But uh, I was having some dental work done, and it took longer than I thought it was going to take. I'm still not 100%, so if I sound a little funny, <laughs> it's some thing that I have to get used to, and it may take a little time. And so, but I do want to, again, really appreciate him for covering for me during that time. Thank God for our other assistant pastors, Assistant Pastor Walton, Assistant Pastor Dennard. Thank God for them being here in the service this morning. And if you will, oh, before I get started, too, I want to thank God for my kids. They are, over the last couple of months or so, they have joined our closed captioning team. So I know I have to be very careful <laughs> with my grammar. Because I know my daughters will be on me. Daddy, you didn't say that right. And all I can say is, amen. <laughs> so hopefully I don't get too excited. To where I forget proper grammar. 
I want to make it as easy on them, and I'll, not only them, but also all of our close captaining team as possible. Hopefully, you don't have to translate or transcribe or try to figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> And so again, just thank God for them. If you have, have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to start reading in the 11th verse. And the title of our message this morning is Don't Be a Distraction. Don't be a distraction. In our praise, in our worship, in our service, period, we always want the focus to be on Jesus. Sometimes I get questioned as to why you don't have one of those nice robes on when you grew up in the pool pit. Or why you don't have one of them nice suits. Because I don't want the people looking at me. I want people's hearts, minds, and focus to be on Jesus. I don't want people to be so captivated in how I look until they miss the message. In many cases, I hear people say the bishop's show was sharp today. Then you ask them, what did the bishop preach about? And the people don't know because they were focused on how the bishop looked. But I want you to remember As we go through this mess today, we're going to see the situation that arose. And this young lady was going to be a distraction to the apostle. But hopefully by now everyone is there. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to begin reading with verse 11. Kind of give you a little background on what's going on. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where a prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. I'm going to pause right there. This is just giving us some of the journeys of Apostle Paul. It was Paul and Silas. And Luke was there with them because he's the one that's doing the recording. He's the one that's writing. So it tells us the journeys, the different places that they went to. 
Again, verse 11 says, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. So it was the Sabbath day. And they went to a place where people were gathered to pray. And they sat down and began to speak unto the women that were in that place. Verse 14 says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So on this journey, this particular journey, they came across this woman named Lydia. Tells her what her occupation was. She was a seller of purple. She made fine garments. Most of that was her color, purple. And she worshiped God and she heard Apostle Paul and Silas as they would speak. And her heart was open unto the Lord. And she attended me and she listened very attentively unto the things which were spoken by Paul. And then she got saved and she was baptized. Not only her, but her household. And she said, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she restrained us. So she offered her home for them to come into and to stay. Don't worry about trying to find lodging at the hotel or the inn. But while you coming through this way, you can stay with me in my house. Then in verse 16, it says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul in us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. So now, as, as Paul and Silas and his group, they begin to go to prayer, here comes this certain young lady. The word says she was possessed with a spirit of divination, met us. Today, we would call this type of person a fortune teller. Yeah. And she brought the people that she worked for much money by her soothsaying, by her telling fortunes. And she began to follow Paul and his group. And she, look at what she says. These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, what she's saying is true. But it's coming from a bad source. Again, what she's saying is true. 
But she's not speaking under the authority of God. What she's saying is under the authority of the devil. Because she's a fortune teller. You can't get sweet and bitter water at the same fountain. You know, we always, a lot of times we say, we ain't going to say we always say. A lot of times we say the devil is the liar. He is, but sometimes he tells the truth. He lies, but he can come and say something that's true. So what this young lady was doing was by her saying this, it was making it seem like Paul and Silas and her and her group was on the same side. But let's read on down to this next verse. Verse 18 says, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So for many days, she will follow Paul and Silas and these men are the most high God. They have come to show us the way of salvation. Knowing full time well she wouldn't say. She had a devil in her. And by her making this proclamation, she became a distraction. Began to get on Paul's nerves. He put up with it for days. And we don't want to be a distraction. In our praise, in our worship, we don't want to be a distraction. Even in our witness, in other words, you know, sometimes single pastor get to preach and I say, hey, man, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But I don't want to be where people will start looking at me. I want to be so loud. And I'm not saying this to tell nobody to stop praising the Lord now or, or amen in the word. But I'm saying look out for your neighbor. Because there may be somebody next to you or in your area that really needs to hear what is being brought forth. And you don't want to be that distraction. But this woman here, she was a distraction. And as as the word says, Paul being grieved. That woman, keep on. Begin to mess with him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to say this. I know this is going to offend some folks. Whenever I see Jesus, not only Jesus, but all the apostles, whenever they minister to people, I don't see what Jesus had an amen corner. From the reading that I read in the Bible, Jesus spoke and people listened. People heard. He didn't have to have no organ backing him up. He didn't have to have an amen corner backing him up. But he just spoke the word. Whenever he, he ministered to people, he didn't have on one of those priestly garments. 
He didn't look like a Pharisee or a Sadducee. He looked like a regular person. Even when they were looking for him to arrest him. He mingled with the people so much until they needed Judas to identify him. Jesus didn't set him, even though he the son of God, now he the lamb of God. He didn't set himself so high above the people to, he wanted the people to reverence him. I'm just trying to give you something to think about. I'm just presenting information. It's up to you what you do with it. But again, this woman, she began to cry out these things about Paul and Silas and the company. And Paul began to turn to that spirit because he knew it wasn't it wasn't just her, but it was a spirit. See, she had been in that region all the time. She had been living there all the time. People knew who she was. People knew who she worked for. They knew she was a Ford and Teller. And here she is coming behind Paul and them, making it seem like Paul and them fortune tellers. We all in this thing together. You know we all together. We all the one. We believe the same thing. You know, there have some people all with, with us Pentecost holiness folks. You know, we all believe the same thing. I'm with you, rap. Ain't living nothing. How can two walk together except they agree? So this woman here again, she's, she's distorting. She's being a distraction. Making the people think that, hey, Paul and Silas, they're no different than what we are. So this is the reason why Paul had to cast this spirit out of her. Right, right. And the words say he came out that same hour. Right. That spirit had to go. Had to go. That spirit of deception. Mm-hmm. That spirit that was within her that was distorting the gospel of God. That spirit that was distracting the people from the word of God, it had to go. Let's see what happened next in verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. So now that this spirit is gone out of this woman, she can't tell fortune no more. She can't tell fortune anymore. I got to try to catch myself. She no longer has the ability. See that spirit gone. And she was bringing people that she worked for a lot of money. And whenever that money would stop coming in, the master got mad. They started that the hope. 
he said the hope, not that he gained, but the hope of the gains was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers. So now they have arrested Paul and Silas. They brought them to the magistrates, the government officials of that, that time. And look at this accusation. These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. I'm going to pause right there. It's amazing these people didn't know who Paul was. Paul was a Jew, but he was a Roman citizen. But they said, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Amen. Man, they ain't nothing but trouble. They aren't anything but trouble. Right. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to do better. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. So here Paul was coming in. He was coming in with something different. He was coming in with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they say that they were wrong. It wasn't lawful for them to receive. And when the Romans received everything, Anybody come with a philosophy, they were receptive to it. But this is the accusation that they're making against Paul and Silas. And the mothers who rose up together against them and the magistrates rent their clothes off. And then they're angry. And commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Saul prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. So we see what happens as a result of them losing their money raising scheme. They had Paul and Silas arrested. And they put them in prison. Boy, they beat them first. They laid many stripes upon them. And the thing about the Romans is there was no limit to the amount of stripes that they gave. The Jews had a limit. Jews could do 39 stripes. That's, that's the most that they could whip you. But the Romans, there was no limit. They beat you till they got tired. So they laid many stripes. Up on Paul and Silas, cast them in prison. Told that jailer to keep them safe. Don't make sure they don't get away. That's right. So as a result of the, him receiving this message, I'm going to put them as deep in the prison as I can. Yeah, right. Put them deep yeah, right. in the prison. Thrust them into the inner prison. Then put stocks on their feet. Make sure they can't run away. They chain their feet to make sure that they could not escape. And let's see what Paul and Silas does. Verse 25 says, and at midnight, probably many were probably good in sleep. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. So here at midnight, Paul and Silas then began to pray. 
they begin to have what we call church in the midst of their situation. Wasn't a good situation, wasn't a happy situation. They have been beaten, been put in prison. And they begin to pray and sing praises. They didn't say no old dad dry him. They weren't talking about their knee aching, even though I know they probably were. Back was hurting too. They begin to thank God. Lord, I thank you for my journey. Lord, I thank you for bringing me into this position. See, that's something we got to learn to do. Whenever we are going through our situation, we ought to still give God thanks. Whatever we're going through, it's hallelujah anyhow. So they began to praise God. The prisoners heard them. And as a result of their praise, let's see what happens. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. So they, look, at, see, look at here what this praise brought. See, what a great earthquake. In the middle of the night, foundation of the prison was shaking. All the doors just came open. And everyone's bands were loose. Not just Paul and Silas, but all the prisoners were free to leave. Now imagine what would have happened if everyone would have escaped. Imagine what would have happened to that jailer. They would have killed him. And we're going to see him lay him down. It says in the 27th verse, and the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison door was open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. So when the warden of the prison, he woke out of his sleep, saw all the doors open, he drew out his sword that he was going to kill himself because he was thinking that, oh, Lord, all the prisoners gone. Every last one of them. So I may as well just go on and kill myself because I know they're going to kill me. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. So Paul began to have compassion on this man. Again, crying, crying, don't do that. Don't. To do thyself no harm. Everyone is here. Could have ran. Could have fled. But every one of us are here. I'm quite sure all those prisoners, they'll be looking at Paul. They knew that the source of the, their escape were Paul and Silas. And if Paul and Silas wasn't running, they didn't need to run. So everyone still was there. Verse 29 said, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. So here this warden is, he's calling for the light, he got the light, came in, and he was shaking. He was afraid. And he began to fall down before Paul and Silas. Verse 30 says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This man knew that a supernatural event had occurred. For this earthquake to come and to open all the doors in the prison and for everybody to be set free and could have ran and they didn't run 
He want to know. He came to Paul and said, I fell on his knees, and he began to say, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31 said, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So they told this man what he needed to do. Right. Paul and Silas weren't looking for the glory. He didn't, they didn't say, believe on us. But they instructed him to believe on Jesus Christ. Because when you believe on Christ, a change is going to occur internally. Say, so you do this, not only you, but your whole house shall be saved. Verse 32 said, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he in all his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. This is what the jailer did. He got Paul and Silas. He received them, took them into his house, cleaned them up, fed them, rejoiced with them, believing in God with all his house. See what happened as a result of this young lady doing what she did. And I'm talking about going back to the beginning, what I was talking about at the beginning of the message. This led to the arrest of Paul and Silas. Seeming like a bad thing. But here in the end, we see how it led to the salvation of this jailer. Not only him, but also his household. Verse 35 says, and when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, let those men go. Let them go. <laughs> they didn't know he was already free. <laughs> <laughs> the magistrates thought they still were locked up. Because they knew that the arrest was bad. They knew, they knew that they had a faulty case. And so they begin to send a message to let them go. They arrested them, had them arrested, brother, in front of everybody. But they wanted to release them, yeah, in the private. Let them go. Because they knew that if, especially when they found out that Paul was a Roman, whoo, that's nothing but trouble. One thing the Romans did do was look out for their citizens. If you did something on the authority of Rome to a Roman city, you were to be held accountable for what you did to them. So, again, uh, they said, the magistrate said, let those men go. Verse 36 said, and the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. So this is what the, what the, the keeper of the prison told Paul in silence. Let me hear what Paul said. But Paul said unto them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans. Because Paul knew he was a Roman. And have cast us into prison. And now they do thrust us out privately. Or purely. They want to do this in the pride. But they beat us in front of everybody. Nay, verily, 
but let them come themselves and fetch us out. Let them come themselves. They come down here. They had them locked up in front of everybody. They need to come down here. And fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. Uh uh. Uh uh. They thought they were Jews, which they were. Paul was a Jew, born of the house of Benjamin. But he had dual citizenship. He had Roman citizenship. And so now they knew they had messed up. Verse 39, they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. Look at that. Here they come. They besought them. They were real nice. Will you please leave? Just leave. Don't tell nobody. Just leave. We sorry. We didn't know you were Roman. Verse 40 said, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. So they did leave the prison. Went right back to that woman Lydia's house. The woman who received them with joy. Went back there. They began to commune with that congregation, with those brethren. They comforted them. Because I'm quite sure they were worried about them. Yes, Lydia yes. and her camp. Yes. Let them know that, hey, we are okay. We went through a beating, but it's all worth it. And then they departed. But I hope everyone got something out of this, getting something out of there, learning from this. Again, we see the faith of Paul and Silas. They were able to spiritually to, to discern, discern what was going on with this young lady. It cast the devil out of her, the spirit out of her, set her free. But oftentimes, when the enemy is using a person, it's not for free. They're using that individual to make whatever they can make off of that person. I look at our entertainment industry, our, our uh, music, the music industry. Most of these secular artists are being pimped. Oh, the, the, the music industry provides them good, seemingly. But those producers, those executives, those are the ones who are making the money. you have enjoyed our program today. We want to invite you to view all of our telecasts. We're on Christian Television Network on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We're also on station WGNM, Cox Cable Channel 7, on Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. On our programs, we have closed caption available. Our services can also be seen 
on the Liza of Pentecostal Church Facebook and on YouTube. Come and be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, Lizella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin with Sunday school at 9 a.m., followed by morning worship at 11 a.m. We have Bible studies on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Join us for Sunday school and Bible study on Zoom. Our meeting ID number is 296-151-7611. And our passcode is 399-261. So again, thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you again in Jesus' name. So reach out and claim it. Cause we're standing on holy ground. Hallelujah.